Good morning, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, and Shinrin Yoku bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update Thursday, September 15th. Around 1.30 p.m. Mountain Time 2022, the Tiernus Fracture Zone is decreasing in seismic activity as the new Madrid is increasing. But the big story, Tahoe could see light snow as early season cold front moves in. Keep calm. It's boom time. It's true, Tahoe could see a light dusting. A week after California baked in record-breaking heat waves, snow has entered the forecast, with a light dusting possible for the Sierra Nevada over the weekend, according to the National Weather Service. That is a boom. Tropical storm warnings issued for parts of Leeward Island as Fiona creeps closer. Multiple tropical systems currently building up. Now, Tropical Storm Fiona moves toward the Leeward Islands, the Virgin Islands, and Puerto Rico, and... Let's take a look at what they have to say. Good day, everybody. So we're tracking the tropics. We have Tropical Storm Fiona. Fiona really blowing up with lots of uh, precipitation, convection, firing up this morning, but not organized. There's no sort of center. So a true tropical storm, 580 miles or so east of the northern Leeward Islands currently. Their storm watches are up right now. Tropical storm watches for places like Barbados and Anguilla and Antigua. Eventually, this storm will move just to the north of those Leeward Islands, moving west currently at 13 miles an hour. Tropical storm force winds extend out 140 miles from the center. It continues then to affect parts of Haiti as we get into early Monday, and it, then it moves, it looks like, maybe to the north and the east. This would be good for us. It would take it east of the Bahamas, but take a look at how wide that swath of uncertainty is. Still a lot of variables out there. So we're going to continue to track. The spaghetti models uh, do have a pretty good consensus here over the next couple of days. Some of them want to veer it off a little bit sooner. Some of them want to take it a little further west. So time will tell. we got close eyes on it for you. And we have close eyes on it as well. Let's first talk about the two disturbances in the Eastern Pacific. Disturbance one and two both have very high chances of forming, and they're both lining up to hit Baja. So we're going to quick take a look at Invest 94 first. That's the closest to Baja and the current tracks. We'll display that. All of them taking them near Baja for the most part are just offshore. So there's going to be uh, tropical storm warnings and watches for Baja in just a few days. Now the sec and then there's a second Invest 95 that's going to follow that up. So it's not going to end because this one is more directly on track for a direct hit. It's going to scrape along the coast of Mexico here and probably lose um, some strength, but it's going to re-strengthen here over the bay and smash into Baja. So those are the Pacific storms we have to worry about. Now let's talk about Tropical Storm Fiona and let's look at the current tracks. The current tracks have them, just most of them just south of Puerto Rico here and curving uh, before Haiti. All of them missing the Dominican and there's a little island up there called Bermuda that they could be heading towards. So that is the tropical update. And I'm sticking with it. Strong winds and high waves approaching southwest Alaska. Watching the tropics in the Atlantic. A potent storm will approach and affect southwest Alaska late this week and into the weekend. Strong winds, dangerous wave action, and heavy rainfall are expected. Another tropical system in the Atlantic will approach the northern Leeward Islands, the U.S. Virgin Islands, and Puerto Rico late this week and into the weekend. For the rest of the nation, heavy rainfall for the upper Midwest and Florida. And let's just take a look at the GFS model. Let's go look at... Uh, yeah, the precipitation. There's the upper Midwest rain, and there's going to be some lingering rain in Florida. Well, there's just a general smattering. Let's look at the total precipitated moisture for you, and there you go. There is your moisture through the end of the weekend. It's not looking like any flooding potential except for all of eastern Florida. It may be a little bit of western Florida here. Picking up three to four inches of rain through the end of the weekend, and we'll just run this through to show you how that progresses. Looks like another tropical system right off of the coast of Texas is going to bring some heavy rain to that region as well. It's good once in a while to not have any severe weather threats, don't you think? Now, earthquakes rattle northern Arkansas and southeastern Missouri yesterday in the heart of the New Madrid zone. There's a boom and a boom. Here are the quakes in the last six days, not qu or last seven days, all magnitudes, not a significant uptick. Anything that we have to worry about. I said that once there's at least 20 quakes in the New Madrid and the Appalachian Fault Zone, there could be something afoot, but this seems to be normal activity, and we, are, we will keep a close eye on it in case anything changes. Worldwide Volcano News, 
Nevado de Ruiz to 22,000 feet, Sangay to 23,000. We also have Suanosima to 6,000, Sakurajima looking like 5,000, Popo to 20,000. And we did have some strong activity here from Ducono, strong eruption reported from field observations and a photo of the explosion. But there is a new volcano to add to the list, Trident Volcano in the Alaska Peninsula. It's pretty close to major cities here. It's not down deep in the Aleutians. Right there is the position of Trident between the Gulf of Alaska and Bristol Bay. Now, the Alaska Volcano Observatory registered a swarm of earthquakes beneath the volcano that started on the 24th of August and is still continuing. Quakes were located at deep levels first, at about 25 kilometers, but have become progressively shallower up to seven in even five or zero kilometers of depth since the 28th of August until now. Now, this volcano has quite an eruptive history at VEI-3. It began erupting in earnest in 1949 and did not stop. There was a VEI-2 in 50, a VEI-3 in 53, and then this baby just shot off VEI-3 after VEI-3, one in 62, one in 63, one in 63, one in 64, one in 67, and one in 68, and one in 74. So it's been quiet for a while, and it seems to be reawakening. It actually looks like there's four cinder cones here. So I wonder which one is Trident. Now, an excellent paper coming out yesterday on the ongoing Fagradelschwal volcano eruption that has happened in two phases. The first phase lasted for up to six months. The second phase, just about a month, all related to the same eruptive event, and it's still ongoing. And this paper, Rapid Shifting of a Deep Magmatic Source at Fagradelschwal Volcano, is very comprehensive. Amazing graphs of the lava flows and... Uh, total science of the 3D imagery on the seismicity and how the magma moved uh, from the mantle up to the surface. So an amazing paper that we're going to link you for free uh, where you can dive deep into the Iceland eruption. All links will be below. Now back to the Tiernus Fracture Zone or Iceland as a whole here. We can see that there is still a flurry of activity up to the north here. There's also activity at Astia, uh, Bartabunga, as well as the Reykjanes Peninsula, and all over at all these volcanic areas. But let's just focus in on the Tiernus Fracture Zone. No volcanic eruption appears to be imminent, and the seismic crisis is dying down, as you can see some of that white showing up between tremor events. So there is a quieting in the Tiernus Fracture Zone. Space Weather News update. All is quiet on the sun. We should have a coronal hole hitting us Maybe elevating space weather up to geomagnetic instability as the three-day geomagnetic forecast suggests here. We did reach geomagnetic instability about 24 hours ago from that event I said that occurred. It looks like a small shockwave or CME hit us, but nothing substantial. That's that shockwave right here. And then the end of the event, you could see it. It was just about 18 hours long. It went and oh. You just connect these dots back together like it never happened. So the BZ and the Phi angle went out of whack and brought us up into geomagnetic instability. And if you look here, the same thing is happening now. The Phi angle is shifting. The density is dropping, but we are really low with plasma speed here. It's going to be very hard to get off the deck here into geomagnetic storm unless we have another shock wave or the coronal hole helps lift us up there. Now here's the current geomagnetic overview. We're at KP2. We were at KP1 for about... 12 hours prior to that, and no potential aurora whatsoever. Now let's moving on to some scary science. Scientists propose controversial plan to refreeze the North and South Poles by spraying sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere. Absolute insanity. Uh, we talked on Magnetic Reversal News last night about the tipping point that led to the mini ice age, and by forming ice in the polar regions, and not changing the ocean currents at the same time could lead to a devastating effects. In fact, a tipping point where you would shut down the AMOC and you would, well, unleash havoc on the climate system. So hopefully these scientists are not globalists and don't, don't have enough control to actually pull off something as stupid as that idea. As NOAA announces, the ozone layer is now 50% healed. They know very little about the ozone layer and its function or the fact that it rises and falls due to cosmic rays and influences externally. Now, we were creating chemicals uh, back in the past that did harm the ozone 
And since then, that's the only good news is that we've stopped producing many of those chlorofluorocarbons and other chemicals that actually interact with the ozone and destroy it. So, some good news, I guess, from climate alarmists. Supernova alert. Astronomers just found a way to predict explosive star deaths. No, they didn't. More science fiction. And all they say here, it's quite ludicrous. Wouldn't it be nice to know when a giant star is about to die in a cataclysmic supernova eruption? Well, yeah, it would be. And I'm sure you'd know if you were living on a planet right nearby. Anyway, a team of astronomers had done just that. If you see a giant red star surrounded by a thick shroud of material, watch out. The star will likely exp explode within a few years. So that is their major breakthrough. If you see a shroud with a red star inside, it may, it may just go boom. But one more boom before we leave. Patagonia owner Jovan Schwinard used to be a hero of mine. Unfortunately, he's now a puppet for the globalists. He gave his company away to quote unquote save the planet. This is billions of dollars that is now going to be used in a 501c4 as a political tool to push the green agenda right down your throats. And that's a boom to knowledge. Hope you got something out of the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people. And be safe. We love you. And that's a boom. Ding, ding, ding.